Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alexandra Mendoza. You guys can call me Alex for short. Um, I'm here today with Coco. Uh, he is from the Department of Rehabilitation. I'm not sure if he's here. Yes, uh, good evening. I'm here, Alex. Thanks. Uh, good evening. My name is Coco Nai. I'm okay. the regional business person. Hi, Renee. How are you? I'm from Coco, I'm, I'm going to make you a, a co-host just in case you need to. Thank you. There you go. Perfect. Great. So, yes, great. Coco, um, did you want to go ahead and introduce the Department of Rehabilitation and then from there move to um, Ready, Willing, Able? Sure, yes. Uh, let me start. Okay. Uh, let me introduce myself first. Uh, my name is uh, Coco Nai. I am the Regional Business Specialist. So my role as a Regional Business Specialist, I work with uh, businesses, uh, apprenticeship program uh, like IWIS. So recently, uh, Department of Rehab, uh, we awarded a grant, like a two-year contract to IWIS to assist individuals with disabilities in a healthcare apprenticeship program opportunity. So the optician is one of them, and we are launching more new programs in medical billing, uh, CNC, and a lot of opportunity. So this has been a great opportunity for us, and we have been a key partner also with uh, DIR. So I'm very glad to see Renee Brown again. Yes. Uh, we have been a partner for more than, I think, uh, five years now. So we've been doing a lot of apprenticeship fair and as you know next month november is the apprenticeship uh, month uh, week so we are hosting a fair so i think alessandra will uh, will uh, discuss more so on that note i would like to uh, introduce alessandra and go ahead with the iwis presentation Perfect. thanks thank you so much coco so i'm going to go ahead and uh share my screen so you guys can see like a little powerpoint uh not gonna talk about every point here because this is mainly just in general but again um thank you so much for being here my name is alex and i work for the institute for workplace skills and innovation um are you guys able to see my screen just fine yes perfect okay so uh right here you can see our logos the institute for workplace skills and innovation is a international company that main goal is to help employers develop and assist in apprenticeships so yeah as coco stated we partner with the dor for this program which this program is called ready willing able and pretty much what this Ready, Willing, and Able Apprenticeship Program consists of and focus is to create career opportunities for individuals with disabilities through an apprenticeship program. So for those of you that are might not be familiar with what an apprenticeship might be, um, this is a slide that can help you. First of all, the difference between an internship and an apprenticeship, an internship is you do your on-the-job training, but you don't get paid. With an apprenticeship, the students, clients will get paid as they're learning new skills, pretty much. They also receive credentials at the end of their apprenticeship. And this is uh, obviously it depends on the apprenticeship, if it's veteran register or state register, but it also depends on the just the credentials that they could receive. Also, many apprenticeships could be really flexible. Somebody mentioned the optician program. That is a virtual program that you could do and do it at your own time. Also, some of them do provide you with college credits. We have one, the CNC, and I will get to this, but just to give you little notes, we have one, which is the CNC machinist that provides you eight credits towards your college um towards your you know continuing your education so now that we know exactly you know the differences between apprenticeship and you know if you are not clear yet i would be more than welcome to like speak with you afterwards and i will provide my info but yes so an apprenticeship an apprentice upon completion of their occupation program they usually start with an average salary of 77,000. And one of the reasons why is because um, many of these employers like to retain their apprentice, apprentices. Why? Because they've been pretty much with them through the beginning. Uh, the employers and the employee at that point 
get to a point where they they have this personalized training for each other. So that's one of the reasons why apprenticeships are really successful. Another reason is during an apprenticeship, an individual should have at least one minimum of um, wage increase during the apprenticeship. So that could be the completion of 400 hours or the completion of like mid course. So it all depends on the apprenticeship. Um, some of the powers of apprenticeships is this is towards a more towards employers. So I really don't want to go there with you guys, but and we try to provide this data to employers to show them the apprentices tend to be more loyal than other individuals, just, especially in our disability community, just because that this individual start with them from the beginning, uh, literally doing their training their modules or coursework with them and at the same time learning these skills. Um, I will skip this one just for the sake of time. Apprenticeship creation is not for you guys. Um, and well, now that I kind of talked about what an apprenticeship is, I wanna now uh, go into our, let me share my screen again. Um, I want to go into our different occupations that we're providing right now. Let me know if you guys are able to. This is not what I want you guys to see. Where is my perfect right here? So are you guys able to see the yes. website? Perfect. So this is our website. Uh, www.readywillingable.us and this is pretty much how it looks like the occupations that we have launched so far had been we have two to add but we have five so far so let's take a look at the, somebody for example the uh, spectacle one for the uh, spectacle one we partner with california association of opticians and each flyer will will unload onto your computer for you to print for you to look in your computer so this is another way of you um, also me teaching you how to navigate our website for easier access in case you don't get all this information but i go to occupations and then i clicked on the spectacle lens dispensary download it uh, the pdf and then automatically opens so pretty much provides you more in-depth information about the optician but um to give you an overall it is a online course so you start your 144 hours of the virtual modules you do your training self-paced this one is really flexible and once you complete that module coursework online then you move on to the on the job training uh, the way that uh, ruby which is executive director for this program she pairs the employers with the clients uh, or at this point candidates location so we work with employers for this program such, such as American Lens, Target, Lens Crafters, um, Warby Parker so many of these employers um, pretty much reach out to the California Association of Opticians and then that's when they do their recruitment is there any questions for this program so far that was actually my program, Alexandria. This is Nicole Picado with DAS. Mm -hmm. I was a consultant for that program. Um, I, really? I changed over to civil service and teacher apprenticeship. So I'm no longer the sector lead on that. So yes. Oh, that's all oh, I would like to connect with you. I, I'm, I would love to connect. But yes, we have, you know, pretty much we partner with Ruby and then uh, where we develop this apprenticeship for the ready will and able so you um i'm going to move on to the other uh occupations so that way we have more um steady pace and if you guys have any questions i could answer i can go back and forth at the end of the meeting so the next one would be that we have here would be the dental assistant for this one we partner with west los angeles college um maybe many of you guys may be familiar with tiffany she is the dean there and for this occupation specifically it has to be a full-time availability also transportation is required just because the uh, training facility is in culver city so this will be perfect for individuals that are closer to that area um 
other than that, it is like a regular classroom setting. She does the, uh, I believe it's more than 144 hours here. I, I need to get that, uh, that information, but please send me an email if anything. They complete their coursework in person for this one. They do some um, activities in the training setting. And then after a certain amount of hours, they'll move on with on the on the job training. And keep in mind that on the job training is when the individuals start getting paid while they're training. Um, also, I, I want to mention that for to apply for any of these occupations that I'm talking about today, all you have to do is send the resume to this email right here, recruitment at ready will enable that US and uh, specify for which occupation you're applying for. Uh, the cohort for this one will be open in January. So we're receiving we're receiving applications right now. If you are interested or someone that you know might be interested, we are open. We still have open slots for this one. For the spectacle, I will forgot to mention, we do have the open cohort. However, it will start in January, but we're still receiving um, applications for this one. But for this one, for example, since it's online, if you send me the resume or, you know, um, somebody applies, we just reach out to them. The executive director reaches out to the individual, sets up a Zoom meeting with them, and they see if they want to start their, their coursework right now. Because that, that would mean that once the cohort starts in January, they can just jump into the on-the-job training. But that's only for the optician. Okay, and then now let's go to this third one here that we have on the website, the CNC machine operator. Uh, this one is believed to, you know, be more of beneficial to individuals with high functioning autism. They, we, per, we partner with the Uniquely Able Academy, and they've been providing this program specifically to individuals with disabilities, such a, as autism, specifically to them. They cater at this program, this training program for them. So that's why it's so specific. But the, pro, the way that it works is also a full-time and, and in-person. And the training location is College of the Canyons, which is the city of uh, Santa Clarita. So I know that one's far and, you know, maybe out of reach, but... Um, we are hoping to bring this program specifically into more Orange County and LA County. And then the way that this one works is 300 hours of in-class instruction and the on-the-job training is 60 hours. Again, the on-the-job training is once with the individuals to so start partnering with the employers or they go on interviews with the employers once they find the match then they'll start getting paid. And literally what that means is that they're under their payroll. <clears throat> Sorry about them. And we have, we just launched the medical biller and coder. Uh, this one we partner with Healthcare Career College and it's more closer towards LA County, Orange County. Uh, this one is located in the city of Paramount. And it also is an in-person program, a full-time. Um, for this one, since we we just started, we just opened the cohort, so we're receiving applications right now. And the same way, the same uh, process, you send me their resume to recruitment at readywillenable.us. So this is a 10-month formal technical instruction stage of the apprenticeship, pretty much. So this is more of a classroom setting as well. And we have, actually, I would show you guys um, at the end how many occupations available we have right now, how many uh, vacancies for each apprenticeship occupation. So lastly, we have the home health aid as well with the Healthcare Career College. And this one is the shortest one that we have that you can be done in 10 weeks. It's also an in-person and uh, pretty much you, it's like a full time. You go there 40 hours, Monday through Friday. And I believe it's 8 a.m. to 4.30 or something, just in that, in that range of time. Uh, 
you put you will take a certification exam at the end of the 10 of the 10 week program and same process you send me and what we once you send me that resume what i do is i forward the resume to the program administrator and then from there they reach out to you uh, usually we all in communication so i know what stage the student or the candidate is in so what I want to show you guys is this vacancy hot list. So pretty much is the amount of vacancies that we have for each occupation. So 20 we have for lens crafters and then they're in the Orange County. 15 we have for Target Optical, Orange County as well. More 10 more for American's Best, Orange County, Sam's Club, Orange County. So, um, the home health aid that I just spoke, we have one in Norwalk and in Par uh, Norwalk, I'm sorry. And then we have two for medical billing and coding and Cerritos. The one in dental assistance for Los Angeles and the CNC we have in LA County and surrounding counties. We have 12 of those. The only problem with the CNC is the training location, which is in Santa Clarita. But once that training is done, the the jobs are all over LA County. So so far we have seventy one available occupations, uh, and throughout this five apprenticeships, and our goal is to bring more programs. That's why I'm so encouraged to tell employers, yes, you know, build an apprenticeship within your workforce. They're so rewarding, and you know, it might be seem like a lot of work at the beginning, but they the you know, the amount of, um, what's it called, In return of investment, it's, you you get it's a lot great greater than what your usually recruitment would be like. Um, I want to mention that some of the occupations that we're working on launching right now is um, massage therapists for the visually impaired individuals. So that's one where we're working and we're hoping to bring also cyber secure, medical cybersecurity. Um, contact us at my, at the end of the day, let me provide you with my information, but here's the website. I will also put this on the chat. Um, let me see if I have who we are right here. Uh, this is our CEO and our program, um, special programs manager. I want to provide you with my info, but I don't think it's here. Um, but I will, I will give it to you guys on the chat. But is there any questions, concerns that I could add, that I could answer for you guys? Let me, uh, let me just start and anyone raise your hand if you have a question and I'll call on you. But uh, one question I have is, do you have to become a Department of Rehab client first or can you just immediately apply to? I am uh, so willing? glad you brought that up. I am so glad. And I'm so, I apologize for not bringing, that's one of our, biggest requirements to be registered with the department of rehabilitation yes you must okay. yeah and that okay. would be i think the only requirement that we have for this program because we do allow second chance individuals as well yes okay so coco maybe you can uh, just yes, briefly can. uh talk about how you um enroll with the uh, department of rehab okay sure let me share my screen i'm, I'm going to talk about my role you know how i work with uh, community partners and businesses and also um, IWIS. So let me share my screen. Give me one second. And, and while you're doing that, I, I guess um, one question I might have for probably Coco is, um, have you, cons will DOR help fund transportation? So if somebody really wanted to uh, go to the um, computer um, numerically controlled um, yes. program, can you help them get deal with a train or, or, or other ways or maybe have a van pull for a group from Orange County? Yes, we can do that. We, in fact, we provide a monthly transportation check, gas check, or like a bus pass with the local county, uh, depending where they live at. So we did provide like monthly transportation stipend. So it's, uh, like certainly we... we <laughs> Yeah. Hold on a second. I'm sorry. Robin's got it. Thank you. We're hoping. Yeah, I'm trying to share my screen. One second. Um, 
And something I do want to mention that um, while Coco's thinking is that we also, uh, they also provide like um, clothing if they need yes, clothing, clothing or too. or any materials for their job or the occupation, such as boots for the CNC, for example, or an iPad for the optical apprenticeship. Okay, for some reason, I'm... Do Coco, you... are you, you're a co-host, you should be able to share. Oh yeah, but I'm looking for my slides this way. Sorry about that. Oh, that, that I can't okay, solve. <laughs> <laughs> let me see. Let me let me do one thing. Give me one second. Save this here. Okay. Well, while you're working on that, um, any other questions for Alexandra? In regards of the occupations. <laughs> I think there was this, uh, there was a, a lady that said that she had one question. I forgot her name. Oh, Ala was the one who was interested in the... Um, yeah, yes, I, yes, I would like to ask if we apply to all radio for this optometrist program. So how we will know if we will... Okay, so, so you've already applied, but you haven't heard back. No. How would you know if you did apply? How would, what would be the response that you get? Yeah, we applied. We want to know what is our next steps. So did you apply through the website or where did you apply? Well, you know, I could not tell you this. This is my sister applied. I could... Okay, you, you know what? Um, Alexandra provided you her contact information. So this would be a perfect use of it, Ala, is to follow up with her, um, with your sister and email her and she'll okay. um, investigate mm -hmm. your particular situation. Yes, okay. definitely. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. thanks. I think uh, Coco's ready. Yeah, Coco. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so let me explain my role again. Uh, my name is Koko Nai. I am the regional business specialist for department rehab, uh, where we assist individuals with disabilities to get back to work uh, through job training, uh, through business engagement. So let me just briefly explain my role. So as a regional business specialist, I work closely with businesses. You know, I help them, you know, get work opportunity, tax credits, you know, WOTC, uh, disability access credit. I am certified by EDD in the state of California to sign up those tax credit. Uh, if any businesses, they hire uh, department rehab clients, I have them fill up the form and sign off. So at the end of the year, they will get some kind of tax credits, uh, small businesses, big businesses. In addition, recently uh, department rehab, uh, we have a grant, so we qualify for the helping individual with disabilities. If they hire any individual with disabilities, they say they need to improve their RAM or provide ADA access or like a work training or get a bigger keyboard or monitor for their clients. The good news is that uh, Department of Rehab, we can chip in some money, we can pull some funds from the state or federal grants to help the small businesses. Because a lot of time, small businesses, we don't want to de them to be burdened because big businesses, they can cooperation, they have a, a lot of you know funds available. But unfortunately, our small businesses, they're always uh, very uh, afraid to hire individual with disability, their number one biggest concern is, you know, liability, uh, workers come. So we explained to them, you know, uh, the hiring individual with disabilities, a lot of time there's a low turnover. So, you know, you, you will have a better chance. We will provide ongoing support, you know, with DOR, you know, we have with job accommodation. So we work closely with, you know, uh, like a, a different, our community partners like Goodwill to assess our clients, depending on the disability, we try our best to help them adjust to the job and also return to the job. We don't just leave our clients or we call it job seekers, our candidate just hang in there. For example, let's say we refer a client to the IWIS optician program. We help them ongoingly like, like transportation. If they say the training is in Santa Clarita, we provide monthly transportation check, uh, gas pass, all that stuff. And in addition, like if they need like a laptop, uniform, clothing, we, we, we provide all that. And also um, assistive technology, this is a big one nowadays because uh, thanks to the technology, there's so many different kinds of technology that we can use to help our clients adjust to the job. For example, one of the technology that we uh, commonly use is called JAWS. JAWS is a very powerful tool, especially for individuals you know, that doesn't have, they cannot use keyboard, they can use all, they can communicate 
via voice. So that's also very good for our clients, you know, that they can communicate by voice to get the work done and they don't have to depend on their hand. So those are the technology we use. So we use different kind of technology for individuals that are blind and all that stuff. So DOR, so we work closely with all community partners. Another thing I do, you know, we do, I work with a, a team of uh, business specialists. Uh, we partner with our local apprenticeship program, whether with DIR or other apprenticeship program in the area. So recently, like I mentioned, we launched a new apprenticeship program with IWIS. It's a two-year contract. Depending on the country, if it's successful, most likely we will extend the grant or the contract. So we want individuals with disabilities to, you know, to tap into the, the high paying living wage because, you know, we don't want them to have a job and just bounce off because a lot of our actually clients, they have a bachelor's degree, master's degree, and they couldn't find a job. Employees are coming back to us, you know, telling, oh, you know what, your client doesn't have experience. He need this, he need this. So we are using apprenticeship to open new doors of opportunities for them to change their life, you know, to get a better living wage, not just a job, because living wage is a big thing nowadays because to live in California, you need at least more than $20 per hour to live. So minimum wage is not going to work for our clients. So we want to support our clients, not only with that, also career advancement opportunity. So that's a big thing. Uh, with DOR, all our clients, we measure them on milestone. We don't just close the case just because, you know, or they already found a job. They can come back to us at any time if they need a, they face a barrier or they need to career advancement. They feel that they are not growing anything. As long as they have a ongoing disability or documented disability, they can come and come back to us and we will provide all the support. And also we work with a local AJCC, you know, EDD is one of our key partner and also DIR. So I'm glad to see Renee Brown here today. So we've been having doing outreach event with them. Every year we do our apprenticeship fair. And recently we presented uh, with them at the meeting of the minds. That's the annual uh, California Workforce Association meeting. So we did a statewide presentation with them. So our, my role as a regional business specialist is to work with businesses, you know, provide them with all the tools, diversity training, inclusion training, you know, to break down the stereotype of hiring individuals with disabilities. And in addition, I also provide soft skills training because a lot of some of our clients, not all I would say, um, they lack some kind of social skill or soft skill. So with DOR, we help them navigate uh, what to say at the interview. We provide mock interviews and we provide all the tools and also case management. So ongoing case management. So if any client, they need any extra support, anything else uh, will be, I work with a team of uh, counselors and also business specialists to help them succeed. So that's pretty much uh, my role with the DOR. And these are some of the, these are all the services that we provide as a regional business specialist team. Okay, and then um, how should they, What's the process for app applying? That's Should, a good question. Where are, can they apply to? And there are basically two major, or I guess three offices in Orange County. One's in Laguna mm -hmm. um, Hills as part of the San Diego group. And then the other one is in Orange, Anaheim and yeah. Orange. Yeah. So does it matter which one they apply to? It uh, doesn't I matter, but I am actually based in Orange San Gabriel district. So my office is, I work closely with the Orange office, Anaheim. If they choose to go Logan Hill office, that's okay too, because I also work closely with their office as well, because we have a team of regional business specialists that they can work anywhere. So we all work closely with each other. We all share the information. We have access to the same database. Uh, but to apply for DOR service, uh, department we have, we have already, you know, make easier for clients, because I know a lot of individuals with disabilities, they already face so much, you know, like difficulties in life, you know, getting a job, retaining a job. So we, we make it more easier if uh, through the expedited enrollment program, as long as they have some kind of documented disability, we can verify, we will open the case right away. We don't want okay. them to wait for like months. You know, I know it used to be back in the yeah. day, a few years ago and, they had to wait for yeah. like and nine And I just, recall, I just recall, Coco, that Trin Van Erp spoke to our group just last month and we yes. recorded the session and have the slides and she went into um in a lot more detail about the application process so i think i'm going to give you a break and okay, you great. have to talk about that i yes. just want to keep our, us on time because renee's our next oh, renee, renee. okay great. So, thank you thanks can for having you, me can so you stay around a little while um in case there's any questions or can you answer some in the chat if people have any 
Sure. Let me take a look at the chat. Okay. 